Hey Sunday, good afternoon. Let me adjust my camera. Yeah, so I want to be out on the side there because I have important graphics. Important graphics. There will be graphics. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this book, which is uh, Graham Hancock's book that came out in 2019. It is the only Graham Hancock book that I have read cover to cover. There were a couple things in this book that bugged me when I read it that I wanted to address. In his view, this extraterrestrial impact that triggers the onset of the Younger Dryas uh, also causes worldwide mega flooding and cataclysms, and is also responsible for the extinction of megafauna and Clovis. So these things are all kind of linked, and there is a there is a cause and effect chain there. One of the main pieces of evidence for the mega flooding is an area that he talks about in his previous book, which I have not read, but he refers to it and he talks about it online, so I'm familiar with his argument, is the channeled scab lands in the Pacific Northwest. And here he teams up with Randall Carlson, they go on the Joe Rogan show many times, far more times than I have um, watched. And uh, they describe the, the evidence for this great tsunami of water that is rushing across. This is crazy. This what we're looking at, folks, the people who are just um, listening in, you have to go to the YouTube now because this is insanity. We're looking at a ridge. We're looking east. The tsunami wave that swept down over these four states, one branch of it swept off to the west. This particular branch of it was 400 feet deep when it hit this ridge. And what it did was it spilled over the ridge. And down here in the foreground, you see the modern day Columbia River. From the top of the ridge, where you see the, the, the agriculture and the landscape, down to the river is about a thousand feet. Wow. So you basically have to picture you've got this huge sheet of, of water, three to four hundred feet deep. It's rushing over and it finds a low little the lowest spot within this ridge, and that's where it starts focusing its energy. And as it does, it begins to just strip away the rock. Now what you're looking at here is this cataract complex is about five miles across. Water pouring over the ridge is at least 200, and you can see what it's done to the bedrock. Anybody listening, you gotta you gotta look at this. You have to look at this, and then listen to the scale. This is this is a gigantic scar in the landscape, of which there are hundreds uh, around this this and region. The, the exact location, Randall. This is Potholes Cataract. Right. The exact location. Yeah. Um, Somebody Latitude. wants to get to it, which we're in Washington State still? Yes, we're in Washington State. Central Washington is going to be right on the Columbia River, um, just below Wenatchee. Mm -hmm. Wenatchee okay, where Washington. we saw that, where we saw that huge. That great rushing of water, according to him, would have wiped out both the societies and cultures that existed at that time near the ice sheet. But importantly, they also would have wiped out all evidence of any kind of advanced civilization in North America or other places around the world where this would have happened. So that's very convenient that we can have a cataclysm that both destroys the civilization and destroys the evidence so that we cannot find it later. Page 444 of America Before. Jostling with icebergs, choked by whole forests, ripped up by their roots, turbulent with mud and boulders, swirling in the depths of the current, what the deluge left behind can still be seen in something of its raw form in the channeled scablands of the state of Washington today, a devastated blank slate, described at length in Magicians of the Gods, uh, littered with 10,000 ton glacial erratics, immense fossilized waterfalls, and current ripples hundreds of feet long and dozens of feet high. If there were cities there before the deluge, they would be gone. If there was any evidence of anything that we would recognize as a technology there before the deluge, it would be gone. And if an advanced antediluvian civilization had flourished anywhere within 500 kilometers of the southern edge of the ice cap, not only in the channeled scablands, but all the way along the ice margin, the flood alone might have been sufficient to ensure that not a trace of it would be left for archaeologists to misrepresent 12,800 years later. There's a problem with his idea, <laughs> and the problem is that the Clovis people, who, by the way, did not go extinct or disappear. There was technological change and a reorganization of populations at the end of the Ice Age. And this is one of these things that us terrible archaeologists actually study and, and understand to a far greater degree than he does. If this great mega flood, represented by the geology of the channeled scablands, destroyed Clovis and would have destroyed any advanced civilization that was there at the time, then logically we should find no evidence of Clovis or of any other archaeology that might predate those floods on top of those flood deposits. And there's a problem for him here because that is actually exactly what 
we do find. One of the quotes that stuck with me from graduate school is worth sharing, and I'm going to attribute it just by memory to Bruce Smith, who is a Smithsonian archaeologist, Smithsonian. Uh, and he referred to the, and I'm just paraphrasing here, I think I'm pretty close, but this is just my memory, the theory-killing power of contrary facts. You only need one good fact to blow a theory or scenario or hypothesis out of the water. If these floods came along, wiped away the surface archaeology in this great cataclysm of water, as they describe, uh, there should be no evidence of the societies that were supposedly wiped away on top of those flood deposits. And actually, that's exactly what we have. The East Wenatchee Cache is one of the most famous Clovis caches. There's an article that came out in 2016 that I'm going to um, borrow from liberally here. The article is entitled Mega Floods and Clovis Cache at Wenatchee, Washington by Richard B. Waite of the U.S. Geological Survey, and it was in Quaternary Research 85, 2016. The East Wenatchee Cache is one of the most famous Clovis caches. It is an intact feature. These projectile points were put there. They were buried intentionally in a cache. It's one of many Clovis caches from across North America. It is a delicate kind of deposit um, that would have been, you know, these, these waters that are coming along and scouring things off the bedrock and moving boulders the sizes of school buses um, would have completely destroyed that. And they didn't. And actually, the East Wenatchee Cache site is down inside uh, evidence of flooding. And the geologists will tell you, and I'm not a geologist, but I can read, will tell you that these scab lands were not caused by a single large flooding event, but by a sequence of large flooding events. They refer to them as mega floods. They were serious, but it was not one big tsunami of water all at the same time. Um, so the East Wenatchee Cache, as you can see in this diagram, I'm going to turn my finger the other way. This diagram I'm going to put right here is kind of perched in the middle. It's not all the way down in the river basin, and it's not all the way up on top. It is in a sequence of floods where some floods would have scoured that channel out before that site was deposited, and then at some point after that, the site was deposited. That means the flood did not wipe out um, the Clovis culture, at least represented by that. Now, there are a couple different ways to explain this, um, neither of which is good for Graham Hancock's idea. One is that the floods, at least some of them, actually predate Clovis, in which case they're not all part of one giant mega flood, uh, in which case there is no giant cataclysmic <laughs> event. Uh, the second possibility is that the floods actually don't destroy the archaeological evidence. And, and this is really clear because we actually have Clovis caches and other kinds of things that would have predated this cataclysm. We have those intact all across the country, and we have all kinds of stratigraphic sequences that show Clovis and what comes after Clovis, and we have stratigraphic sequences of dated soils and sediments that predate Clovis. So this stuff was not all wiped away. If there was an ancient civilization that had, um, you know, architecture and had had done a lot of earth moving and things like that, there would be plenty of evidence for it. Plenty. And we probably would have found it by now. Identifying this cataclysmic flood as a mechanism for removing all of that evidence, which is so important to his narrative, um, is convenient. But in fact, the evidence shows that it was not a single cataclysmic flood, A, and B, it did not remove all the archaeological evidence. In fact, that is why we know about Clovis, because there is archaeology left of it that was not removed by any single great flood. We have stratigraphic sequences intact back into the Pleistocene and, you know, ponds and lake cores and things that don't show any evidence of having been part of a great cataclysmic flood. And those are up near the ice sheet. You know, they are in Wisconsin and Illinois and Indiana and Ohio and, and other places. So the argument makes absolutely no sense. With as good of a scholar as he purports himself to be, uh, I'm really actually surprised and disappointed that he can't go read the basic scientific research. I'll put the reference down there to the paper. You go read it yourself and you explain to me why things like East Wenatchee exist, where they do, right at ground zero of your best case evidence for 
Cataclysmic flooding at the beginning of the Younger Dryas. Why are there very delicate Clovis sites situated on top of that evidence, or in places where they would have surely been destroyed if the flood had been of the magnitude um, that you claim it is? And that's just one gripe. I've got a list. I'll get back to some of the others when I can. So thank you for your attention.